Hi, this is Paula Bernier, Executive Editor at TMC. I'm here at IT Expo in Austin, and I'm talking with uh, John Arnold from J. Arnold & Associates. Welcome, John. Hi, Paula. Good to see you again. You too. So uh, for folks that aren't familiar with you, John, mm -hmm. can you talk a, a bit about your background and, and what you're doing these days? Sure, sure. So I'm an independent analyst, and I have been focused on the broad IP communication space for about 11 years now and I look at various a aspects started out being VoIP primarily and then it's kind of like added layers over the years so now it's everything building on that so it's you know SIP trunking it's it's uh, video it's mobility it's it's certainly become collaboration in video and that kind of all falls under the unified communications umbrella which seems to be getting closer to taking everything under its wing, including social media. And so the boundaries get pushed further and further out, but it all starts from having this, this IP capability in your network that takes voice off of the tradi traditional legacy network into the data world. Now it's all kind of mixed and matched together, data, voice, and video into one environment. And that obviously opens up all kinds of possibilities. And that's what brings us to where we are here and a lot of what we see at IT Expo. That's right. So uh, there have been a lot of dis mm -hmm. interesting discussions about uh, UC, especially today in some of the keynotes. And I think one of the themes is for all the promise of UC, it's had a fair amount of challenges and there's been somewhat uh, limited adoption of UC to date. Uh, is that an accurate representation? And, and what are some of the key challenges and, and, and how do you mm -hmm. see things uh, shaking out for UC going forward? Sure, so, you know, uh, and, and we talk about it as if the world knows what UC is, right? So I think most people in this audience do know that it is, you know, unified communications. But I'm saying that because we understand it pretty clearly that there is an, under, there's an underlying value proposition to having all of these communications modes together in one environment, real time, uh, integrated with, with uh, a common interface, doesn't matter if you're at your desk, on your mobile phone, at your home, all these things. And it's kind of a bit of a nirvana, and, it, and it's a big step up for when uni unified messaging came into the market many years ago. Everyone thought that was going to be the best thing we, we really needed. And now UC is a couple of levels above that. And it all makes sense if you're a vendor. It all makes sense if you're a carrier. It all makes sense if you are an IT guy. And that's all great. But UC doesn't go anywhere unless the end users actually adopt it. And that's, I think, one of the challenges that companies are seeing, that it makes sense everywhere else. But if you say UC to... A, an employee in a company, and you think of ourselves in our work environments, we don't think of UC in that language. We don't think of it as a solution to a problem. So that's part of the thing there is, is that for the most part, people use their day-to-day -day tools fairly easily. But the problem is they use them individually, independently. So, you know, I am, presence, all these, these real-time text-based modes are fine, and presence, of course, tells people where they are, how they want to be reached. But everyone uses tools kind of in a very discreet way. And they don't see a reason to use them together and the value that comes from having that capability. And I think that's certainly what, what Chris Hummel was getting at is, we know the technology is good, it works for the most part at scales. Yes, there are a lot of issues still with interop between vendors and across the standards. That's kind of a given for this stuff. But I think one of the real obstacles is that the the end users have to buy into UC as well. And that is kind of an organic process because they're already using these tools day to day, uh, even social media, but they're not using them in an integrated fashion. And that's really what UC is trying to deliver. The other holdback too is that most UC is sold ultimately through channels. And the channels themselves, A, have a hard time understanding the value proposition well enough to sell it. And also they have their own issues internally supporting it uh, as a technology and actually being motivated to push it to the market because UC is not a product and if you're used to selling boxes, phones, switches, whatever, routers, you're asked to sell UC now and it's not sold the same way. So the incentive financially is a little different for them and I think that still has to be worked out. So there is still some work that has to happen for the business models that drive UC to, to kind of mature and kind of find a home for the people who ultimately have to sell it. 
and then ultimately for the people who are going to use it, the end users at their desks and in their cars and their hotel rooms, they have to see it as something that's better than what they're doing today. And we're still a long way from having that. Right. That's an interesting point about uh, the d uh, distributors and the people selling it having mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, uh, m maybe new business models uh, developing a around that. So uh, that's a pretty significant uh, challenge. Uh, is there, do you have any uh, thoughts on how we can get past that? Well, sure. So a lot of it is, I think a lot of it falls to the vendors to, uh, and they're all doing this. To, they, they're educating the channel, but they're also refining their channel partner programs to really focus on the ones who get it and who want to sell it. Because yes, selling boxes is a better way to make money for, in, for traditional purposes, but a lot of that business is going away. So a lot of things are you know migrating to cloud and hosted and virtualization. So new business models come along with that. and the revenue and their compensation issues that drive the channels changes along with that. So at some point they kind of have to get with it. So either they, they get out of the business or they retrain to learn how to sell these new technologies. And that still is gonna take a bit of time. So the vendors are all struggling with, we have good technology here, but that kind of link to the customer is still a little weak. So it's gonna take some time for them to kind of winnow out their channel partners. The, you know, UC isn't all these companies sell, but for the ones who want to drive UC, they've got to pick the right mix of partners who can do it and will do it because they may have a will to do it, but if they don't have the proper training or understanding, they won't be able to have success. Right. And uh, TMC uh, in September uh, launched a new magazine uh, for which I am the editor. It's called Customer Magazine, mm -hmm. and it talks about all aspects of the customer experience uh, from lead generation to the contact center, uh, how to leverage uh, data on, uh, from various um, sources to better understand mm -hmm. and target uh, customers and prospects. Um, and as I mentioned, one of the key uh, aspects of it has to do with contact centers and mm -hmm. all that's happening with contact centers impact from uh, social media and how do you respond to that and how might that tie into the contact center. So I, I just wondered what your thoughts are on uh, today's contact center, uh, kind of uh, what it's going to look like in the near future and how you see ties in with all of that. Sure. So there's like, you know, 10 questions in yeah. there. So that, and that's a whole <laughs> magazine issue, right? So, but yeah, contact center is, is a, a huge area that plays well into UC actually. And, and it's, it's, it's also one of the probably misunderstood elements of UC that has a strong story to it because the contact center is really the front door for a lot of businesses to their customers. And, you know, y you can make the case that, you know, the least skilled and qualified people are, are, are on those phone lines handling those inquiries and they are in a position to actually create really important connections to customers. And what's happening, of course, is you hear that consumerization of IT expression, and it's very much happening in that space because a lot of contact center activity uh, is being driven now by people who are conditioned to using consumer-based applications that they may not be using in the business space. So for a lot of people, they, think, they don't think twice about using social media as a way to communicate with a company about an issue. They don't think twice about you know, wanting to make a call or even needing to make a call from their mobile device. And the issues around getting customer support when you're on the road are very, they're much, much more stressful, especially if you're calling into a toll-free number and you're asked to wait for 20 minutes. Well, you don't want to do that. It's not safe, it's expensive, et cetera. It's not really the right thing. So the contact center has been forced to really deal with a lot of these issues. And it, it, so it boils down to basically having to move from a, single mode environment where most of your inquiries are handled by a telephone, sometimes in real time, sometimes not. But now you're in a multimodal environment where customers are coming at you from all directions. Um, and uh, Sorry, multi-channel environment, multiple directions and multimodal. So a lot of people are using more than one mode at the same time, mm -hmm. right? So they may be emailing you and speaking to you and they may even have a want to do a video chat session with you. So for inbound calls, there's a lot of challenge. You see type of tools for the contact center make it really interesting for outbound communication as well because now you can use like with click to call, you can make those outbound calls to your customers almost at no charge and communicate with them at a time that's convenient for them. 
And this gets into things like virtual queuing, which uh, is an important area that helps uh, contact centers align their staffing needs to peak times to when they have to call people back and also how they do it at the customer's convenience instead of at the contact center's convenience. It all boils down to being customer centric because a lot of these communications tools now, because they're coming from the customer, are, um, are very uh, in their control, not the contact center's control. So their expectations of service are much higher now than they were in the past when the contact center held all the cards. So a lot of opportunity for contact centers to use UC style solutions that allow the agents to have that kind of multi-mode toolkit where they can really respond it whatever way the customer prefers. And ultimately that's what's going to make for long-term relationships for those customers, you know, basically doing it on their terms. And then the friction goes away pretty fast. Great. All right. Well, thank you so much, John. Okay. You're welcome. Thanks, Again, Paula. This is Paula Vernier at IT Expo in Austin, and we look forward to seeing you all at IT Expo in Miami.